And it was only in the past five years when all this evidence would emerge. And I'd be like, well, that doesn't, that's not true. It doesn't seem true to me. Like, I don't know what the truth is, but I can tell when someone's lying. It's my one gift. And I would see these people lying. And I'd be like, why are they lying? Like, I know they're lying, but why? And so I really came to this, like, at the age of 50. Like, that's very late. It's like, I never for a second thought you have UFOs. What changed your attitude at 50? The evidence. Which is what? Well, we, we, oh, well, oh my gosh. Uh, the Pentagon was required by the last defense authorization bill to, like, produce some of their files on UFOs, and it turns out they have known about this since the end of the Second World War, which ended in 1945. Been a huge increase during that war, during the war as well. Huge increase in UFO sightings, in UFO crashes, and it turns out the federal government has been tracking this for 80 years and lying about it. So why? Well, that's a great question, and I can't answer it. Hello everyone, once again from the dystopian Tory monarchy of the United Kingdom. A rare occasion where I'm filming in the daytime, so everything looks pretty weird. But today, we are talking about something I guess I'd been not ignoring, but just kind of watching from afar, and that's the recent UFO congressional hearings. Now, I wasn't going to make a video about these, and this video isn't necessarily about that. It's more about how UFO conspiracies are basically becoming, or always were, a right-wing cult. It's not to say that everyone who believes in UFOs is a conservative, is a conspiracy theorist, all that stuff, but because I'll talk about my own views on UFOs and stuff, I don't think necessarily thinking we're not alone in space, in the universe, is like some sort of fringe belief, because it's not. But what I'm talking about is basically people who have forsaken all critical thinking skills and basically eat up anything to do with UFO conspiracy theories and actually get very sensitive if anyone would dare point out inconsistencies or maybe how possibly someone isn't reliable for this stuff. And recently what prompted this video was Ken Klippenstein actually did a freedom of information request on the key witness in the congressional hearings and found out things about like his mental health and how probably this guy shouldn't have had security clearance. Like, for example, Joe Biden removed a lot of people having security clearance just for smoking weed and stuff. And this guy seems to have had, like, actual mental breakdowns, but still retained it. And because Ken Klippenstein found this out through, like I said, a freedom of information request, loads of people in the UFO community have gone after him and basically said he's part of this conspiracy theory to discredit this guy because of who Ken Klippenstein's dad was basically. Like, it is getting unhinged, but I also want to talk about, like, historically, like, right-wing conspiracy theories around UFOs promoted by Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson, and also how, like, racism really comes into play with a lot of these conspiracy theories, especially in regards to stuff around, like, Mayans and ancient Egyptians, where basically white people can't believe that non-white people might have built something, like, really massive that must have been aliens, but when it comes to the ancient Greeks and Romans, then of course they built all their stuff. It's just when your skin isn't pale, apparently aliens did it. So all of that coming up for you today. Please like the video. Let me know what you guys think about UFOs down in the comments. Also follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter, also on Instagram, also on Blue Sky and also on Freds. Also consider becoming a patron. I'm trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible. Benefits include access to old exclusive content, access to my Nintendo Switch friend code, and if you want to join the private patrons Discord server, please give me a message when you sign up and I will send you a private code. I'm just doing this now for increased security. So yeah, check that out and also check out the subreddit and check out my second channel. The links to everything down in the description. So I guess I have to start off with my own opinion on aliens and UFOs. Like broadly, I don't really care if they exist or don't. I'm leaning towards like we aren't alone in the universe because it seems very improbable because it's just so infinite, right? Like there's no way we are the only type of animal on a different planet. It's not like we're just the only lucky ones, somehow. We're the only, like, conscious things to inhabit. Like, literally, like, infinite amounts of planets and stuff. But on that note, I'm also skeptical of a lot of UFO stuff. Like, show me proper evidence, and I'll believe it more. Like, yes, it's nice to get lots of testimony, people coming forward, 
But when we don't actually have like any real tangible proof, again, I'm skeptical. And even the recent congressional witness, it's all about like, I didn't see it. I spoke to people who did see it, right? And in my opinion, that isn't good enough. And it's amazing how many people just like, you know, took everything this guy said as gospel. Like he's literally exposed aliens and every single thing he said is 100% true. This one guy, first time we're hearing about a lot of this stuff, like in terms of this very specific detail. And yeah, the US government are perfectly happy for him to go reveal all the secrets to Congress. They didn't really care, I guess. So yeah, give me photos, give me better footage. I'm not even saying that UFOs haven't visited Earth. I'm not saying aliens don't exist. I'm just saying right now, I don't care. We have a million problems in the world. We're literally destroying our own planet for profit. An alien could land in my front garden, come in my house and make himself a cup of coffee and then leave. And I probably wouldn't care that much because how's that gonna help me in my life? How's that gonna help me solve the various issues in the world? Yes, cool, we're not alone. Aliens, are you gonna help us? No? Okay, then we've got our own problems to deal with. That's the way I see it, to be honest. And also, I think a lot of this stuff is also distraction by Congress, and it would also be a nice excuse for the Pentagon to justify all those, like, billions in funding that it's missing and say, oh, actually, we were, do it we were researching secret UFO projects. That's why we can't account for these billions that have gone missing. Not that we've probably funneled it to like defense contractors and that's why we can't account for billions in our spending. So anyway, like I said, you can be passionate about it. You can be interested. I personally don't really care at this point. Now, that is why I guess I am not heavily invested and I can maybe view these things. I wouldn't say with like the most critical eye, but a lot of skepticism. And it's not just because I'm generally skeptical. It's more that I haven't really seen much good evidence that would lead me to believe that, yeah, this guy in Congress who we're going to talk about is like super legit and there's no way he can be wrong. So I probably don't need to explain to you what happened, but you guys would have seen this. David Grush, he went to Congress. He started telling everyone how, you know, he has knowledge of people who know like reverse engineering, alien spaceships, picking up UFOs, all this actual contact with aliens, literally detailing what he says aliens are really like, the aliens who visit Earth. But on conspiracy subreddit, they post one of the revelations of the hearing on UFOs in the US Congress. And you have comments like this. So aliens are real and the government is corrupt. My mind is blown. I have not verified, but in another board, they said the Congresswoman asked extraterrestrial and he corrected her by saying non-human biologicals. So if true, no, not aliens, non-humans, but from Earth. Lizard people. This is huge. They've literally recovered non-humans from these craft. This stuff needs to be front page news. We're going to talk about this later. But once you like believe in one conspiracy theory, a lot of people believe in all of them. And now like they take this guy at his word completely. He says they're real in front of Congress. Aliens are real. Why isn't this on every newspaper in the world? We now have proof. The proof is guy saying he spoke to guys who he can't tell us about that aliens exist and do all this stuff, right? Again, not saying he is 100% lying. I am saying he didn't present evidence to make me believe everything he actually said. Now, Ken Klippenstein is obviously an investigative journalist and he has great credibility. Like, look up all the stuff this guy's broken, everything he's exposed, people like trust him and he breaks a lot of stories, right? I would say he's a very credible journalist. Also, he does troll, but there's nothing for me to doubt his credibility on this. So, um, the UFO whistleblower is accusing me of using confidential medical records leaked to me by the intelligence community. Every part of that is false. I use public available police records I obtained under an FOIA. So Ken Klippenstein wrote this up for The Intercept, and I'm going to read it for you. So, uh, non-human biological material recovered from purported... UFO crash sites, a decades-long secret program to reverse engineer extraterrestrial aircraft, a government cover-up to silence truth-tellers. These are some of the extraordinary claims made to Congress by Major David Grush, a 36-year-old retired Air Force intelligence officer who also served as an advisor to the Pentagon's Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force. Last month, the House Oversight Committee opened an investigation after Grush claimed he was retaliated against for blowing the whistle 
on the US government's alleged UAP recovery program. Security clearances of the sort Grush has held are subject to strict requirements, including regarding psychological episodes and, and substance issues. Grush has used his high-level clearance to shore up his credibility, telling the committee, I was cleared to literally all relevant compartments and in a position of extreme trust in both my military and civilian capacities. But police records obtained by The Intercept under the Virginia Freedom of Information Act reveal that on October 1st, 2018, Grush was committed to a mental health facility based in part on a report he had made a threat to kill himself after Grush's wife told him he was an alcoholic and suggested that he get help. A former colleague of Grush's expressed shock that he retained his clearance after the 2014 incident, which was also documented in public records obtained by The Intercept. I think it's like any incident group. Once you're in, they generally protect their own, said the former colleague. The former colleague said that the 2014 incident was known to Grush's superiors. The incident report also describes Grush. The man could be violent, very strong, the report notes, adding that he might be suffering from PTSD, sometimes makes these threats when drunk. He has never harmed himself. The narrative case report describes law enforcement officers detaining Grush under an emergency custody order and taking him to a local emergency room where a mental health specialist decided to ask a magistrate to issue a temporary detention order. A separate police report dated October 13th, 2014, describes a similar incident of a 27-year-old threatening to kill himself at a property that County Records Show was owned at the time by him and his ex-wife. These records were not confidential, medical, or leaked. They are publicly available law enforcement records obtained under a routine Virginia FOIA request. Copies of The Intercept's correspondence with the Sheriff's Office are published with this story. So I don't know about you guys, but looking into a guy who makes extraordinary claims about UFOs is not a bad thing for a journalist to do. Also finding out that he's had struggles with his mental health, including like PTSD and alcoholism is of course very relevant. Now, does that automatically mean he's a crazy man who can't be trusted? No, of course it doesn't. But it is important to the story, especially the way they are now painting Ken Klippenstein as an intelligence asset who's trying to discredit him. Because even in Grush's own testimony, he says there's a program to kill people who would be whistleblowers. So the way they're destroying your reputation is through a journalist doing a really standard thing journalists do and finding out that you've had run-ins with the law based on your PTSD and potential alcoholism. Doesn't seem like the best way, in my opinion, that the intelligence community would go after someone they wanted to silence because if they really wanted to do that, you probably wouldn't even know they did it in the first place. They've been doing this for like literal decades. The CIA have always done this. Intelligence have always done this. I really don't think this is the way they'd go about destroying this guy's reputation. But of course, the whole UFO community, it seems like, are now going after Ken Klippenstein because they think, oh my God, we finally have proof of UFOs, concrete proof. How could you? How could you, you know, find out information about this man, which is publicly available if you make the right like requests? So um, Ken Klippenstein was tweeting a lot about this. So update on the biggest UFO subreddit. They've learned my dad is a research chemist and this post is, Here's the connection between the Department of Energy and The Intercept's hit piece against Grush. The journalist who wrote the hit piece against Grush in The Intercept is the son of a chemist and researcher who works for the Argonne National Lab Laboratory, which is part of the US Department of Energy. His father's interests include developing theoretical methods for predicting the kinetics and dynamics of gas phase reactions and implying them to interesting problems in combustion, interstellar, and atmospheric chemistry. And then he tweeted out this post. It says, don't harass Klippenstein at his house. And it says, guys, I'm as furious as anyone else here about the Grush smear piece, but I've seen his personal address getting posted here and that worries me. Let me be clear, if anyone in the UFO community goes and harasses Klippenstein and his family at his house, it will be quite a bad look for those of us that want this to be an honest and professional group for disclosure and analysis of UFOs. We could even have the law potentially coming after this sub. Klippenstein's family do not deserve to get dragged into this. Let's keep our anger directed at the right place for Intercept. They are paying Klippenstein and allow this piece to be published. If you must go anywhere, go there and professionally conduct yourself. 
and sign this petition calling for the end of Klippenstein's employment. So you have some comments and some of the posts about him. Leaks or no leaks, this pathetic attempt at character assassination is weak. And then this seems quite an unhinged. I think these people think we're the same as the anti-war hippies. Grush isn't Daniel Ellsberg, and the UFO community has no interest in putting daisies in the end of MP rifles. I want revenge? R revenge for what? Revenge for not knowing about UFOs? You mean possibly being lied to about the most important human discovery for hundreds of years doesn't make you all war warm and fuzzy inside? It makes me want to introduce their insides to the outside. So, absolutely unhinged here, right? This guy is saying he wants to kill people because he thinks the government are lying to him about UFOs, right? I'm trying to show you this episode to show you how unhinged some people go when they start believing in these conspiracy theories. Like I said, I don't care if UFOs exist. I don't care if the government's been lying about it either because they're literally the root of none of my problems right now. Imagine being so radicalized by these conspiracies, you want to kill people in the government because you think they've been lying to you about UFOs. Like, absolutely unhinged, just like posting it on the UFO Reddit and getting upvoted. Someone saying, regardless of whether or not you believe Grush's testimony, everyone should be furious at that Ken Clippenstein article at The Intercept. For anyone to think they would use this information to smear a congressional testimony is beyond desperation and is hands down the bottom of the barrel journalism. If Intercept wants to retain any remaining shred of credibility, they would take this article down and apologize to Grush. I don't understand that, right? A guy is literally saying, for the first time, I have knowledge of UFOs. Here it is. No one has ever heard this before. I am telling you in front of the world. And we should just ignore anything controversial about him. We should ignore he has PTSD. We should ignore he's had outbursts in the past suggesting that he might harm himself. We should ignore that the police have had to get involved with him because of this. Why would you ignore that? I'm not saying that means he's completely untrustworthy. But when someone is making claims, no one else is. And they're so like outlandish to most of us. It is a relevant thing, right? And it's publicly available information. Like, they're acting like Ken Klippenstein violated some sort of, like, medical law to get these records or violated something he didn't. He literally just asked for them and they gave it to him. And then he published it. Like, that's what good journalists do. But these guys want so badly to believe in the UFO stuff. Like I said, it's a cult at this point. They want so badly to believe this guy can't be wrong and we shouldn't be skeptical at all. We should absolutely take him at his word and anything bad about him, anything problematic in his past, anything controversial, we'll just ignore it because that's obviously smearing him. So what we've discussed so far seems to be like not very political in the partisan sense, right? Ken Klippenstein is clearly like progressive, a progressive journalist, but nothing we've seen so far inherently screams right wing, like right wing conspiracy theories, people who believe in lots of other crazy stuff, but also a lot of these conspiracy theories are promoted by conservatives because conservatives in America especially want you to distrust the government. They have this more libertarian slant where government bad, government communism, government totalitarian, they are lying to you about everything. They're lying to you about pandemics, vaccines, they're lying to you about war, they're lying to you about lots of stuff. And yeah, the government lie. But these guys, like I said, when you buy into conspiracies, you often lose any rational thoughts or you lose any sense of critical thinking. So if the government are lying about UFOs, they're also lying about vaccines and COVID as well. Like that is traditionally how a lot of people fall down these rabbit holes. Like I said, Tucker Carlson is big into this stuff and he sincerely believes it as well. And he sincerely believes it. And I want to play a bit of a podcast for you because a lot of people into UFOs like Tucker Carlson because he is a high profile person who has constantly spoke about UFOs. The first question is, is this real? Or am I just being a crazy person who's spending too much time on the internet? Well, this summer, we got a call. We didn't reach out, this person called us. Lexi, who's standing right there, who's a genius, one of our producers, gets this call from this guy who's a tenured Stanford Medical School professor. And he wants to come on the show. Now, this guy has a couple patents, and so he's rich. And he's got tenure at one of the most prestigious schools in the world. So, like. He's not a flake. He comes on and he's like, 11 years ago, the US government reached out to me because I'm an expert on head injuries, on brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries. As a physician, they had all these court cases from families of US servicemen, over 100, who'd been killed by UFOs. The Department of Defense was refusing to give them death benefits or medical benefits. And he's like, so they're in the courts. 
And I was like, there are over a hundred servicemen killed by UFOs? Like, what? He's like, yeah. And there are court cases about it. I'm like, why isn't this on the front page of the New York Times? I don't know. But he goes, I'm involved in it. I'm the, you know, I'm one of the researchers. I'm the expert witness in these cases. Holy shit. What does that mean? And he's like, for example, UFOs appear to be tra attracted for whatever reason to nuclear energy. So at nuclear missile bases in the upper Midwest, for example, nuclear powered aircraft carriers, nuclear powered submarines are all getting buzzed by these objects, including underwater. And in a number of cases, these things have landed on military bases, including famously in Germany, in West Germany in the 70s, and servicemen have approached them. Like, what is this thing? There's this like giant glowing thing on the base. And they approach and they get traumatic brain injury. Like they are rendered, like, yeah, yeah. they get brain damage or they're killed. And he studied their brains and they have, this is all totally real. This is not, this is the Department of Defense, dude. And they've all had this damage from some kind of powerful energy that we cannot identify. So then this guy's like, wow, he's just a scientist. He never believed in UFOs. He's like, this is real. I cannot believe this is real. This is like crazy. He's just doing research on it. He's still at Stanford. And it turns out that actually, yes, these things have been shot down and crashed and the US government has the wreckage and it's being held by defense contractors, Raytheon, Lockheed, which are big independent companies, but that work for the US government. They're really part of the Department of Defense, but they're separate. So you can't, their sunshine laws don't apply to them. You can't actually get information from them. It's a very tricky way to hide information. And they have the wreckage from these crafts. Obviously he's had ridiculous segments like this, like Tucker Carlson is upset. The Pentagon is focusing more on diversity than UFOs. During Monday's Tucker Carlson tonight on Fox News, Tucker expressed anger that the US military are in his view, more focused on diversity initiatives than investigating aliens. The entire Department of Defense was in Tucker's sights as he questioned why efforts to make the armed forces more inclusive were taking precedent over dealing with what might be extraterrestrial flyovers. This is your country, please defend it. It is becoming clear they have no interest in this. This is the latest example of that, he added before throwing to a clip of a UFO talking head, Bill Whitaker, who told CBS 60 Minutes that UFOs are not only real, but regularly spotted zipping through US restricted airspace. The Pentagon admits it doesn't know what in the world this is, from a national security perspective, this is a very big problem. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but Alex Jones is another big right winger who's mad about UFOs. So Alex Jones claims aliens want to make humans into cyborg slaves of Satan. I declare this July 4th, 2022 to be the declaration of independence against the alien force on this planet today. Aliens are waging war against humans and their biology and our future. That is attempting to exterminate the majority of us and force minority that is left to merge with AI computers and become cyborg slaves of Satan. Now, I showed you some of the of the UFO subreddit posts and they actually did realize that a couple years ago, their sub was being infested by just crazy conspiracy theorists because of obviously people watching Tucker Carlson and Alex Jones and believing everything they say about aliens. And then someone posted, what the hell is happening to this sub? It's gone completely off the rails. This sub has become a giant clusterfuck between the stick and the mud skeptics that don't even let people harmlessly speculate before the pitchforks come out to the new breed of Trump, Tucker Carlson, QAnon right wing nut jobs. This place is not the same vibe that it once was. It's very hostile. I'm sure some of you will say my post adds to the problem, but what's the alternative? Just say nothing. For anyone that doubts what I'm talking about, go read my post history where I'm arguing with this guy who's dead set on telling me how much of a shithole Africa is, despite me repeating that neither the sub nor the post he's on is in any way about Africa. What the hell? This is not even the first time that I've argued with someone about Africa on this sub in recent weeks. After they brought it up for seemingly no reason, then to criticize it, this doesn't seem weird to you guys. This is exactly what happened to r slash conspiracy. You can't go there for genuine conspiracies anymore because it's full of, of right-wing sleepy Joe BS. I don't know, I'm just saying my opinion, the mods need to do something about off-topic comments on this sub is going to continue to veer more and more into having that kind of outward appearance and how's that going to look? I saw another comment earlier about how thankfully the Nordic aliens are finally coming to defend all the recent racism against white people. Like Jesus Christ, seriously, I'm about to just start spending all my time on aliens at this rate. Despite that place being off the rails in its own way, it's at least not headed in the direction this sub is. It's embarrassing, honestly. So like I said, there's many reasons why UFO conspiracies draw people in. You've already seen the lack of critical thinking where they just think, oh yeah, this guy said it, so it's true. Because I want it to be true. I want the government to have lied to me so I can justify my violence, some of them even say. But um, I read a good article 
um, where they interviewed someone who kind of recovers this stuff and they just kind of link it all together, all these conspiracy theories. And I thought it was uh, worth checking out by Chauncey De Vega, who interviewed Jason Colavito, who's a professional skeptic, researcher and author whose essays have been featured in The New Republic and Slate. And he's also appeared on the History Channel. He's the author of several books, including The Mound, Build a Myth, Jason and the Argonauts Through the Ages, The Legends of the Pyramids, Myths and Misconceptions Around Ancient Egypt. In this conversation, Cola Vito places these new conspiracy theories around the big lie in the 2020 election in a larger context of fear and anxiety about social change in America. How do you explain the confluence of all these events that have drawn these conspiracy theories? And he says, it's important to understand that all these conspiracy theories are interrelated. It's not like QAnon is completely separate from UFOs and that is completely separate from a conspiracy theory about Jewish bankers. As Marjorie Taylor Greene suggested by using Jewish space lasers, these conspiracies are all connected by this idea of rejected knowledge, that there is a secret body of knowledge that can tell a person how the world really works and is being hidden away from the public by elites. People who believe in conspiracy theories are searching for a means to understand a complex and changing world in a simple way, one that flatters their own particular prejudices, particular beliefs and feelings that they should be the ones at the centre of the historical narrative. How do we explain these waves of conspiracy theories in a larger context? Much of what we see today is very similar to what was going on in the 50s and 60s. There was a confluence of paranormal and political conspiracies at the same time. The UFO panic emerged in the late 40s through to the 60s, but it didn't occur in isolation. It was happening at the same time of McCarthyism and the Red Scare. People were seeing communists behind every bush and trying to use the power of government to destroy what they perceived to be communist infiltration of the country. McCarthy had stoked nativism, nationalism, and many forms of bigotry in order to gin up a vast conspiracy theory that there was a massive communist infiltration. He didn't limit this to just communists. He assumed that communists, being deviants, were also close allies of gay people, and therefore he and his allies created a massive purge of gay people from government, leading to decades of oppression and some of the strictest anti-gay laws the country ever had. But while he's doing this, the UFO panic is happening outside Washington and eventually in DC itself. How do we apply those questions of identity and agency to the current conspiracy theories? Most of what later became QAnon was already in circulation over the internet and on TV before it came together as a pro-Trump conspiracy. It reaches all the way from the protocols of the Elders of Zion straight to UFO conspiracy theories and satanic panic. These are narratives that were already found circulating on programs like Ancient Aliens or America Unearthed and other History Channel shows. This happened because the cable TV networks understood that their audience were primarily older and white, and in the case of the History Channel, largely male, and the program was towards that demographic. There is an important overlap between these shows and their political consequences. A man named J. Hutton Pulitzer, who also goes by Joven Pulitzer, and a couple of other names, appeared on a show called The Curse of Oak Island and some, and some other ancient mystery-style shows, described as a treasure hunter, a historian, and many other titles. On Curse of Oak Island, they went looking for the Ark of the Covenant. Pulitzer's persona at the time was Treasure Force Commander, who was supposedly leading a crack team of historical investigators as they hunted history's greatest artefacts. Where did he go next? Rudy Giuliani and the Donald Trump campaign used his ideas about ballot fraud to help create the recounts that we see in Arizona and the ongoing efforts to do the same in Georgia. In both instances, Pulitzer is being paid as a consultant to find evidence of ballot fraud through his amazing technology of looking for bamboo in the ballots to prove they came from China. This also involves looking for creases in what Pulitzer calls the origami ballots to prove they are folded up by Asian people. The guy went straight from the History Channel to the Trump conspiracy world. While he might be the most direct line between History Channel conspiracies and the extreme right-wing pro-Trump community, he's not the only one. Just the other day, Nick Pope, one of the ancient astronaut theorists from Ancient Aliens show, appeared on Rudy Giuliani's podcast. There you have the former lawyer for Donald Trump talking UFOs with a guy from Ancient Aliens. Tucker Carlson was also on Ancient Aliens talking to Nick Pope. Carlson has UFO theories from the History Channel on his own show. So the world of UFO conspiracy theories and right-wing conspiracy theories is very directly related. Because yes, you can be sceptical of the government in many ways. You can believe in UFOs, you can believe in aliens. 
But sometimes when you go down this rabbit hole that the government are lying to me about everything, it makes you susceptible to all these conspiracy theories. And also a lot of people who buy into these insane conspiracy theories usually have poor education. They might have grown up in like very religious societies as well. So their critical thinking skills about the nature of reality, I guess, are very poor. And sometimes they're just looking for community and make it their like whole personality. Like they seriously are personally invested in these things being true because they feel like it's so a part of their identity now. But like that article was saying, you cannot divorce the racism from all of this stuff because ancient aliens and the History Channel shows are fundamentally like racist. As these shows were popular with like white middle-aged men anyway, and maybe people with poor educational critical thinking skills, you watch them and that might be where your interest in UFOs come from. Because if you don't know history very well and you grow up in a racist country, then you're probably, you know, very susceptible to believe in that stuff. And then from there, you just go down like the rabbit hole, don't you? Like, I don't know if ancient Egyptians didn't create the pyramids and who did? Did aliens come and visit? And that's the inspiration for all the gods in pantheons around the world from India to South America to Egypt and stuff. Then yeah, you go into more conspiracy theories and then you believe that you've been lied to your whole life by the government. Every single thing they've told you is a lie to cover up something. They're in the pay of the Jewish conspiracy theory. They're in the pay of the communists, the Chinese and stuff like that. And then you go on to Alex Jones and then you just have your brain absolutely fried by conspiracy theories. And what's frustrating about conspiracy theories, whether they be UFOs or whatever, is the government does lie to you. But they don't lie to you in the way these people think, right? The government lies to you in more subtle ways. Like, I don't know, conditioning you to think capitalism is good. Neoliberalism is awesome convincing you to vote against your own interests, putting you into wage slavery and making you happy to accept that because they promise you maybe you can become wealthy like them. Obviously lying about all the terrible things they do overseas in various different wars. The government lies to you about stuff like that. But like I said, you have to have nuance and critical thinking skills. Because the US government lied about its support for Pol Pot, doesn't somehow also mean that UFOs exist and they've been covering them up. Just because the US government did MK Ultra on its own citizens doesn't mean that COVID is a hoax and vaccines make you sterile or something like that, right? Like, just because you can see that the government, yes, did one thing, which is well-documented evidence they did, doesn't mean every single thing you think in your head they've actually done, right? And that's why I can't take this star witness at the congressional hearing seriously until i get more corroborating evidence right i am totally open to believing the government covered up this stuff for decades but show me proof we have proof about mk ultra we have proof about the cia supporting paul pot we have proof about loads of terrible things the government did but we don't have proof of the ufos enough to make most people believe in it so if you wholeheartedly believe everything this grush guy says you're basically using him to, to come to conclusion you've already made up in your mind and although a lot of these people you know, who like this UFO stuff might not be right-wing conspiracy theorists. I think this way of thinking and buying into these conspiracy theories does prime you to believe in other ones because you start distrusting the government, but you start distrusting the government on things that you can't prove yourself and things that haven't been proven. But if you start believing that, yes, everything this Grush guy says is real, then how about Michael Flynn? What about him? Everything he says is true as well? all the insane stuff he says, is that true? Because he's a decorated person who was in the military. And that might be insane to some of you like UFO enthusiasts and stuff. But for a lot of people, that is the natural progression of this stuff. You get in through the UFOs, then you start listening to Tucker Carlson, then you start listening to Alex Jones, Michael Flynn, you get into this ecosystem of Rudy Giuliani, interviewing people who used to work on ancient aliens. And then you just become a fascist, basically. And that's how it works. And that's how uh, and I bet there are people who are watching this right now, you can tell me in the comments, you've seen family members and friends go from just harmlessly believing, I don't know, conspiracies about UFOs, to somehow believing the whole world is run for Satan and COVID was a lie or something. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.